but speaking to you from Mejigori. And as you can see behind me, pilgrims are arriving here in very large numbers. It was estimated over the bank holiday weekend that the International Evening Mass was attended by over 10,000 pilgrims. The 26th annual retreat, International Retreat for Priests, will be held here in this parish from the 3rd to the 7th of July. Priests will be given free accommodation and meals from the parishioners here of this parish. If you would like to register for this retreat, the email address is seminar.maria at medjugorje.hr. So this week, Holly Carney visited Medjugorje and this is not her first visit to Medjugorje. She was here in September. So Holly, can you tell us about what happened to you during that pilgrimage in September? Oh, absolutely. I actually came uh, in a period of 24 hours, made the decision to bring um, a team of people to see if there was a movie to be made here and what that through line would look like. And I just really came here on a business reconnaissance, if you will. I'd already um, been a producer on a Marion film. It took eight years to develop and I wasn't interested in doing another. And then of course I came here and met with um, so many amazing beautiful people, especially the relevant church officials, who after prayer and discernment discussions said, yes, we want you to make a movie about what's going on here. And so the movie, what will the main focus be of that movie? Do you have an idea at the moment? Well, actually, we're going to keep that uh, top secret. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tee <laughs> Wow. <laughs> well, because it's not what the people think. This is not going to be a movie for the Catholics or the Christians who are already faithful and already believers. It's not going to be a, a movie for the people who love to come to Medjugorje and want to tell about Medjugorje. We have beautiful documentaries out right now about those things. This is going to be a global film uh, produced by Lucas Foster, a prolific producer from Hollywood, who does action films and films that are uh, for the global audience, for the for everybody. Not, not It's not going to be what people would perceive here as a religious film at all. We want to speak to the world about what's going on here. And so uh, the effect of your visit in Medjugorje, did it um, have a, an influence in your private life too? Yes. My visit here changed me so internally, I can't even describe. I'm a lover of the Lord. I'm a devout Catholic. I love our sacramental graces. I raise my children in the faith. My husband and I have prayed the rosary daily for years. We get up super early because he's a former um, NFL athlete and uh, still works with uh, football players. We have busy lives. We have fun lives. We're, we're going all the time trying to leave a legacy and an impact on the culture and in and, and his, his area of sports and my area of film and, and television up in, in Hollywood. And um, we're, we're very faithful. But when I came here, uh, a transformation happened here that I can't quite describe. I just know that I was touched by the Blessed Mother's call on my life to be here when I didn't even believe in Medjugorje, didn't want to come. What blew off the producer who invited me to participate in this project, and I'm like, oh, I'm busy, um, until I made her, met her face to face and the Lord spoke to my heart. So I am a different person today since September and probably it's an act of consciousness now to really uh, share my faith uh, publicly with everyone, not just in private with my family or in teaching uh, religion classes, or, but just to really be a, a living temple of Christ. I, I think that that's, if I could even articulate what happened to me here, what, what's happening now. So that was the first visit. That was the first visit. And now this is the second visit. Uh -huh. And did you have uh, something else inspire you during <laughs> this week? Okay. So I got back to um, my life after I met with 
holy saints here. Uh, you know, I met with Bishop Cavalli. I had the most incredible meeting with him in September that was anointed and powerful. And it's kind of private what happened in our meeting, but I'll just say that it that meeting stayed with me for three months after I got home. The holiness of it and his support of what I said we were called how I said this movie was to be done and, how, and the way that we are called to do it and his support of, and being in agreement with Father Yozo from Chicago. Uh, I, is, is it Greenbridge? Did I say it right? Greenbridge, I think. Okay, yeah, okay. He's the provincial here now. He's the, the provincial here. Franciscan. I've met with him many times and his support of our vision of, of what we, we need to do uh, and meeting with him and just the holiness and graces from him and his support, Father Z. Um, and then, of course, Father Yozo. We drove to uh, Croatia to the Adriatic Sea, the monastery, and met with fa the Father Yozo and had his bless Zavko, thank you, and had his blessings. And he said last time, "Our Lady's been waiting for you to do this movie." And in that in that meeting, I was like, "How? Oh, who am I? But I'm 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 a small producer. I'm indie film. Like, who am I? How am I to do a movie on a global scale?" But I've been working with Lucas Foster for a few years now. And he's a, a prolific producer, as I mentioned before. And when I got back, not even thinking about this, I got back to, I met with him two days after I got back from Medjugorje. And he said, what were you doing in Bosnia and Herzegovina? And I'm like, that's a very good question. I said, I went to see if there was a movie to be made and, and what the through line would be. And he said, not knowing anything, he said, well, that's my job. I'm the producer. Like the, that, that does that in development, comes up with the ideas and the, yeah. and I said, oh good, will you make this movie with me? And he said, yes. And when, since we've been here, he's been saying, I don't know what I'm doing here. I never say yes to anybody. I say, no, 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 no. I don't know how I said yes to Holly, but we all know. We know the lady called him. And so my trip this time has been an extension of the last time I was here, but but mirroring Lucas's uh, reconnaissance and investigation of what's going on, and his depth of questions and his his depth of of investigating and seeking, and as a Jewish man, it has been mind blowing for him. And we're both sitting there going, we don't know what we're doing here, but we know <laughs> we're supposed to make some big movie on a global scale for the world to know what's going on here. Well, thank you very much, Holly, for sharing that with us. And we wish you all the blessings and the grace that you'll need to be able to do this movie that will really reach everybody on a global stage, yes. that they're informed about Our Lady, who's come here for 42 years. Wow, you, somebody's pulling. Yeah. The dog is <laughs> pulling my... Oh, Kurt, you didn't come then. Chuko! Oh. oh, my goodness! <laughs> So this is Lucas Foster who will be directing the film. I know that you're not allowed to tell us too much about the details of the film, but is there anything that you could share with us? <laughs> well, what I would say is uh, I'm on some kind of pilgrimage <clears throat> that I didn't know I was going to be on. I'm not really sure how I got here, like a, a lot of people. <coughs> And I've been here a week, basically. And a lot of things have happened that are, that I would call coincidences. Um, you know, a little hard to explain some of these things, but anyway, interesting things have happened. And all I can tell you is that I'm processing it right, still. Right, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm trying to figure out what it means. Yeah and how to convey it to other people in a way that, um, you know, that moves them, that, right. ma that is emotional. Yes, yes. And uh, that's, what I can, that's what I can say about it. I'm, I'm on the same journey everybody else is on, um, you know, trying to figure out what, I'm, what my role is supposed to be. Right, right. So thank you very much for sharing that with us. We really appreciate it because I know it's not easy to be in the middle of processing coming into a place like this. That probably have you ever been in a shrine before? Have you? <laughs> I went to my first mass ever, yeah, like five days ago. Wow! And I went to my second mass ever in my life. Yeah. Uh, you realize I'm Jewish, right? Right. Uh, I went to my second mass ever yesterday, Sunday, and uh, you know, so it's, so much it's all it's all very new to me. Yeah. 
um, and I'm trying to figure out a lot of the messages that you get, you know, from Catholicism or from Christianity for that matter, or even from Judaism, are similar, right? right. I, you know, I was bar mitzvahed. You know, I had some religious training when I was a kid, but I more or less abandoned it after that and wasn't really in touch with any of that. And I think the, you know, these lessons that you get at mass or you know, talking to a priest about anything, they're fundamentally moral lessons. They're simple moral lessons. They're not, you don't have to be a Catholic to understand these moral right, lessons. Right. They're, they're universal right. lessons. And uh, if everybody just paid attention to these old ideas, the world would be a lot better place. Okay. Thank you so much sure. for sharing that with us. So that's about it from me this week. Take care and God bless you. And God willing, I'll see you next week. Goodbye and God bless. Dear